it's been quite a while since I've done a Zen piece, you know. Um, I like Zen. One of the reasons why I like Zen so much is because Zen is simple, robust, direct, and cut to the chase. It's about reality. It deals with reality in the here and now. The Zen masters seem to want to make life real. So, you know, he uses swords of righteousness, all tools at his disposal to carve and strip away all the unessential stuff and all the ambiguity, false precept and concept, so that all you naysayers, spiritual obstructionists, as you come forward, your big philosophers with your big religion will become speechless and dumbfounded when the Zen master body slam you with the truth of righteousness and shatter your illusions and all your false perceptions so that you can see life if it is true, simple, clear, and pristine beauty. Yeah, the Zen master is concerned with reality. Truth. Yes, truth in the here and now. Not tomorrow, nay yesterday, but this very moment. This very moment. This. Now. Here. Right now. Because they don't want you to get lost into mental oblivion. Verbal oblivion. You know, just running in circles. Like a dog chasing its tail. Zen master wants you to face it the truth and face reality with clarity because the, the sooner you do that is the sooner you can stop lying to yourself the sooner you can stop playing hide and seek with yourself sneaking up on yourself scaring yourself scaring yourself with all the lies we tell ourselves you see Zen want to strip away all of that so you can take that big leap, that fearless jump into your own humanness. So that you can become more real and alive. So you can start feel the buoyancy of life. The wave of infinite flowing through you, in and around you. While crashing against the walls of your consciousness and bringing your senses to life. And as you begin to ride this wave, you start to realize this. You start to realize that you're part of a bigger picture, an infinite expanse, a vast field of energy that is endless, a vast, live, and chaotic ocean, uncontrolled, uncontrollable. Some waves are going to be big. Some waves are going to be small. Some are going to be large and chaotic. But there's nothing to fear. But you just relax and flow with it. You go with the flow. That's what Zen is all about. It's about experience in life. So now you're out in the ocean, this vast infinite expanse we call life. Waves, big, huge waves crashing all around you. But brothers, no need to worry. Relax and go with the flow. It's be like a bird that uses the wind for its ascent and the calm for its descent. Its wings are just tools to fly. Fulfillment in time as chaos and tension cease from the mind. Whole life is just one chapter, a field of dreams. You are the actor. Okay, dum-dums, wakey-wakey. You've been sleeping for lifetimes. It's time to wake up now. Trust me, you can do it. But before you get those feet wet, Life's a road with many twists and turns. Oops, wrong turn, heartburn, lessons learned. But time's longer than a rope, and if you should carry society's load on your back too long, her guilt will lead you astray. Tugging tightly like a noose around your neck, you'll be able to take a second breath and will begin to fuss and fret because you haven't embraced quietude yet. Now, gentlemen, as we participate and partake of the nectar of life, and drink the milk of truth from Mother Nature's breast. Honey flows from her nest. While dripping from her lines is the ecstasy of divine understanding. Now, what the fuck did I just say? Well, I'm just as 
baffled. But this shit sound good to me, so I guess we'll keep it. So, Bridget, leaning on the stuff of righteousness and standing on the pinnacle of consciousness, we must first address the question of life. What is life? What is the essence of life? How do we cultivate life? And what is the secret to immortality? The secret to the essence of life is life. Yes, my friends, you heard me. The secret to life is life itself. And the key to the essence of life is simply to live life and have fun. And the secret to immortality is that there is no secret. What did you all expect? A human sacrifice? <laughs> I can just hear your devil worshippers and Satan is now. It drains the blood from the human into the chalice. Take the blood from the human and drain it in the chalice. Bitch, please. <laughs> Those stupid rituals and shortcuts not going to get you any closer to the divine truth. You see, all you search really means nothing because everything that you need, you already have. Yes, Bredgen, you're fully equipped to take on all the tasks and all the challenges that life has to offer. You see, nature has no program, program for failure. So you come with all the tools. She gave you everything. You're already fully equipped. And you're lacking nothing. That's what Zen, that's what this whole story of Zen is. Turn your light around and be in total acceptance of who you are. And only then you can become alive. And only then you can become alive and start to hear the music that is life. And start to dance. 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 And yes, my friends, while you're dancing, don't forget the milk from Mother Nature's breast is the essence of life itself. And the honey from our nest is the sweetness of life. And when you mix them together, you get the sweet ambrosia, the intoxication of life. And this intoxication will take you to the zone of great understanding. And now that you have broken through and achieved success, don't forget to give thanks and enjoy life, brethren. So, so now let's talk about the great, great, great Grandmaster Lynchy. Yes. I love this guy. I love Tang Po, but uh, Lynchy is, is the man too. And uh, I think last video we talked about... Where is Grandmaster Shishi? Drown in a deep spring. Where is Grandmaster Shishi? Disappeared in the big empty. So now, brethren, let's pull our chairs up to the table so as to dine on these rare tidbits. The great, great, great Grandmaster Lynchy left behind. Yes, brethren, these rare, juicy, and succulent morsels are the delicacy of delicacies. So, so now let's see what the great, great, great Grandmaster Lynchy have to say about life. The master ascended the hall and said, one person is sitting on top of a lonely mountain peak, yet he has not removed himself from the world. One person is in the middle of the city street, yet he has no likes or dislikes. Now which one is ahead? Which one is behind? Don't think I'm talking about Vimalakirti. Don't think I'm talking about Fuktashi. Now take care. You know what's beautiful about Zen is that it does not chain you down. It leaves room for interpretation and understanding based on where you are, based on your level of development, based on your terrain, based on the society that you're living in. That's the beauty of Zen. It does not limit you. It does not say you have to see things only one way and just this way. It's either my way or the highway. It doesn't say that. Because you see, if Zen is about life, it's about the buoyancy of life. One person 
leave the world. And now he's on a mountain peak. Mr. Monkman, why did he leave the world, retreat from life, and end up on a mountain peak? Why did you leave society? Why did you renounce, Mr. Monkman? Why didn't you stay with us? And how different is your mountain to the valley? And the life you choose to live, is it that much better up there than the, the life down here, the life in the city street? Are they not one and the same? Are they not both a part of nature? So I used to have this friend, this buddy. We used to work out together. And periodically, he'd like to go into into the forest and then among trees, you know. And he wants to go into nature. He said. Then he'd come back all excited. Man, I went into nature. You know, it was so beautiful and serene out there. I mean, you know, I said, man, you, you, you cannot go into nature. He's like, what are you talking about? I just came back from the park and beautiful trees. I say, what you did, you went out to the park. You went out to the forest, but you cannot go into nature. Because you are from nature. Nature is all around you. You just went to the park and you went to the tree. You went in you got a little peace of mind and you know you were among the trees and you got some fresh air, you know. But where we're standing right now used to be trees and fresh air and fresh breeze until we cut them down. We used to be trees. But we cut down the trees and build houses and great society, great cities and streets. You know? So now you have no more fresh air, no more breeze. We have made our environment uninhabitable. We not only make our environment uninhabitable, but we have also made it unfriendly. We made it intolerable and unfriendly, all in the name of progress. So now we have to retreat to forests. Take some time out to go into the forest and convince yourself that we're in nature. No, you're not in nature. Yeah, because nature is all around you. Two birds flying in the air. One bird said, hey, I can feel the air. The other bird said, no, nigga. The real air is over here. So you're sitting in your big mountain peak. You're one with nature. Nice, beautiful streams, flowing water, crystal clear water, gentle breeze caressing your skin, and everything is quiet. The silence you can almost cut it with a knife because you're one with nature. And everything is serene and beautiful. Birds chirping, even the mosquito around the ears sound like a symphony. And everything is so quiet and serene and peaceful. So quiet you could even hear an ant's fart. Your mind is quiet. Your surrounding is peaceful and you're synchronizing with everything and the universe around you. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a thought of your mother just popped up in your mind. You remember the time when she used to fix you those nice succulent meal. But you irritated now. It's not just pissed you off, didn't it? You're so annoyed at the thought of your mother popping up in your mind that you felt like kicking her in the head. Because now that thought just broke out of your meditative mode and out of that Buddha zone. And you know how hard it takes to get back to that place. God Damn it, you said to yourself. Why now? And then your belly began to rumble. You realize how hungry you are. Probably haven't eaten a good meal in a few days. So you have to go roast yourself some potato. Because you have separated yourself from the world. This is when you wish you was a fasting Buddha. Eating only one rice grain a day. But your needs are never what you think they are. You're just a victim of thoughts. 
aliens traveling from far, calling on need fueled by fear, sinking you deeper into despair. Life involves living, loving, giving, receiving, a total commitment to understanding. Truth is always changing. Stagnation is the only sin. As your circle turns and turns, if you forget the lesson learned, in your calm, you'll burn. So even though you have retreated from society, and now you're sitting in your big mountain peak meditating, you still haven't broken your attachment from the world. That's what Lynchy was saying here. You haven't gone ahead. Who is ahead? Because you haven't broken your attachment to desire, fear, needs, and desires. You're still a slave to them. That's why mom could pop up in your mind and tempt you with a meal. Zen master say if you should see God on the path and the way to enlightenment, Kill him. Kill God. Subjugate him. Turn your back on him. Don't let him be a hindrance. If you can kill God, then maybe he wasn't God then, was he? Left the world behind. So even though you're on the mountain peak, you haven't left the world behind. You haven't broken your attachment to the senses. Even though you're on the mountain peak, Mr. Monk Man, have you advanced ahead? Have you gotten anywhere? Picture this. So you're in your big spaceship flying through the galaxies, traversing wormholes and, and flying through multiple stargates. But you're still just as miserable as a poor peasant pushing an ox cart or riding a bicycle. You see, wherever you go, there you are. It don't matter how complex your life is or simple it is. See, it's not about that. Life is about you. And how you view it and how you deal with it. How do you harness Prometheus fire? You have to rise above the senses that binds you. You have to rise above the senses that control you. You got to rise above your fear, needs, and desires. And how do you do that? Well, Master Lynchy asked a question. He said, one person is sitting on a top. One person is sitting on top of a lonely mountain peak. Yet, he has not removed himself from the world. One person is in the middle of the city street. Yet, he has no likes or dislikes. Master Lynch is a bad man. But you see, Master Lynch wasn't just asking questions. He was just making statements because he leaves us with some answers. He solved the puzzle for us. Why he solved the puzzle? Because he's a true Zen man. He didn't want no confusion, no ambiguity. He wanted, he wanted to leave us with clarity, clarity of the way. So this is what Lynch, this is what the great venerable Master Lynch had to say. Followers of the way. The Dharma of the Buddhas call for no special undertaking. Just act ordinary without trying to do anything particular. Move your bowels, piss, get dressed, eat your rice. And if you get tired, then lay down. Fools may laugh at me, <laughs> but wise men will know what I mean. See, the great, great, great grandmaster Jesus understood this because he said, be in the world, but not of the world. Live your life. Do what you need to do. Have fun. But don't fall into the tricks. Don't let them trick you. Jesus understood, Lin Chi. So you're living in a big city. You're not on a mountain peak. You're in a big city. You decide to partake and participate in life. And you look all around you, and you notice that it's... There's nothing real about this. It's all an illusion. Whether you're in a mountain peak or in a city street, none of it is real. It takes a keen and alert person. It takes another type of intuitive intelligence to understand that. That this is just a facade. It's all a big lie. People driving around in their fancy car, living in their big castle, gilded cages. People looking at themselves in the mirror. 
underwear blowing out their tongues, shaking their asses, taking selfies, seeking friendship, looking for attention. But if you look deep enough, you'll see that this is all just one big lie. Because we're just renting our bodies and leasing time. It's all just an illusion with a limited shelf life. And as the saying goes, a life's a serious joke. Take it too serious, then the joke's on you. You know, I'm reminded of a story I was told about the venerable great 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 Shaolin master, Abbot Lin Ding. He would give his weekly audience to the public, but this one time, a beautiful woman was kneeling in front of him. And when he had finished his consultation with her, the woman went to stand up, but trip and fell forward, head first into his lap. The abbot ejaculated. The abbot should have slapped the shit out of her. See, abbot Lin Ding should have laid one of those eagle claw iron palm grip on her ass. You bitch, you come to my temple to defile me? Mount Tiley, bring me some rope and tie this bitch to the temple post. Now hand me the shawl and whip. Are you gonna whip her, master? Fifty years of meditation and cheek cultivation all down the drain. Just like that. Stand aside, Tiley, so I can tear this ass up. You poor bitch. Wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Buddha bless your soul. You see, the venerable Abbot Lindang was too tightly worn. He was treating life too serious. He was flying a little too close to the sun and crashing into a butterfly. You know what I like about Master Lin Chi? He never leave you in confusion. He never leave you twisting in the wind. If he asks you a question, he already have an answer for you. And if you go a little further, if we go a little deeper, you can see that he provide the answer for us. Two men. One on the mountaintop, one in the city. Who is ahead? One is in deep meditation. One is in the city, observing life, living, right? Who is ahead? Master Lynch says, As I see it, there is no Buddha, no living being, no long ago, no now. If you want to get it, you have already gotten it. It's not something that requires time. There is no religious practice, no enlightenment, no getting anything, no missing out on anything. At no time is there any other Dharma than this. If anyone claims that there is a Dharma superior to this, I say it must be a dream, a phantom. You know, living in this reality, in society, it takes keen awareness. You have to be very alert. But you notice the you have you noticed the magician he can never trick kids because kids haven't been lied to enough to believe the lie. So their minds are clear. When your mind is clear, it's hard for society to trick you. You know, you can see the magician. You can see where the trick is coming from. You stay in alert, see. They can't trick you no more. You know? They can't run the bullshit to you. Tell you to overachieve and you, you gotta be successful, you gotta be achieved. And I've known people who not only achieve, but they wanna overachieve. And how can you overachieve? If you set a goal and you reach your goal, then that's it, isn't it? Why do you wanna go back and redo it? But they have us believing all this stuff, you know, in society you gotta get it, you gotta get that whatever, you gotta get you gotta get you gotta move and you gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. And they pretty much they just want you to work yourself to death if you're stupid enough to do it. Well, you know, they know that this is all this one big lie. But to keep the illusion going, they got to get you to believe the lie. But Lynchy said, if you're observant enough, you don't have to go to no mountain peak. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing to get. There's no achievement to achieve. There's no way to go. Even if you have achieved anti-gravity and you're building cities up in the air and now you're floating around in a glorified skateboard you call a flying carpet. 
You're just as miserable. Because if you're not alert, you'll never know that you've been programmed and conditioned from your birth. Zen is in everything.